It's one of my brand new songs. I'll just start playing the guitar and all of a sudden I'll hear this really cool chord. Mottawa's Colleen Myrie crafts stories in song. Actor Chris Nolet acts stories out on stage. It's all about what does my character want or need or how are they going to get it. Well, this isn't a production line situation at all. It's not even pragmatic. Steve and Sharon Frickman tune their work to the environment. These stories and more coming up on this edition of The Playlist. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Please welcome Colleen Myrie to the playlist.
just doodling. I'm Steve Frickman, I live in Grand Marais, and I work with metals and wood and stone, sculpturally. What I love about this is that it's just going to be a simple mosaic. My name is Sharon Frickman, I was trained as a painter and I am a glass artist as well. So I've been having this push-pull because glass has such rigid rules in how it behaves and paint is so fluid. So I'm constantly working with how can I get my paintings to have more luminosity and or have my glass flow better. some small pieces on different different media. Some carving, some metal work, and some glass. And then they might even mix. We work right next to each other, so I can at any point say, Steve, Steve, when you get a minute, you know, come look at this. What do you think? You are intentionally oversimplifying Mm -hmm. structure you're not gonna... It used to be tricky to, for me to hand him the pencil and now I'm always excited to hand him the pencil and see what he draws next. You know Sharon is a, a lifetime visual artist so I've learned a lot of stuff you know about seeing the lines but seeing the spaces between the lines as shapes. This is the beauty of working on a piece from nature too is that it doesn't matter if anything's parallel or straight because it's, it can be free form, because in nature, that's what we see. We have a landscape business, landscape gardening business, and um, I tend to, I've become the designated hardscaper, and I make structures in the landscape. He develops sort of the bones of the garden, and then I come in with shrubs, trees, that kind of thing, we discuss where those should be. I'm experiencing nature and it feeds me to then come into the studio in the winter and work. The commissions make me look at different palettes. I wanted the clinic to be soft, just be softer and work better in the clinic and not stand out. So we just keep futzing with drawings. This is one of Steve's, and what I got out of this one is changed the whole last window. There's a different percentage of us in each piece. It just depends. That's what's so important about how we work. So it may not be evident in every piece that, oh, Steve did metal, Sharon did glass. But the initial designs and the process of how we get there is, is really essential. Chris Nolet is a fixture in the Duluth Superior Theater scene, playing funny roles and serious roles. Welcome to the playlist, Chris. Well, thanks. So tell me about the role that you're playing now. You are George in... In Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, which is one of the, uh, the classics of American theater. So I'm, I'm really excited to be doing it. This is actually the second time I've done it, and uh, it gets better every time. So. Question is, what do you bring to it that's different than you played five years ago or six years uh, ago? I think mostly the, the, the biggest difference is obviously I'm working with three different people in it this time around so reacting to them is um, you know you've got all sorts of different reactions they play things differently than the other people did and so I, I think that's part of it uh, Molly O'Neill who plays Martha brings um, a real kind of vulnerability to her, her Martha um, and that's 
it's interesting. It's uh, it's never the same thing twice. Heck, it's never even the same show from night to night. So, it's a challenging role in in that we were talking about the verbal repartee, the verbal abuse that, that right. happens over the course of two right. and a half hours. Mm -hmm. George and Martha um, have got a, a terribly psychotic, abusive relationship, um, and yet they need each other. And part of what makes it so interesting is they're obviously both very intelligent and they take a lot of pleasure in stabbing each other with words. So um, the, the other couple that gets involved pretty much ends up horrified at what's going on around them and kind of getting dragged into it. So it's, um, it's very funny at times and yet it's, it's very um, shattering. This is um, a heavier role. Mm -hmm. um, do you prefer the more serious roles? Do you feel that the spam a lot is a better fit? What, what, what? <laughs> how do you decide what kind of role you want to play? Uh, for me, it really comes down to uh, you know what. If I have the choice, and you know, obviously, first of all, you have to be able to get the part. But um, for me, what what really makes it is you know how interesting is the role to me, um, and George's is, is fascinating. Just what motivates him, what, what causes him to act the way he does. And I've been a, as far as Spamalot goes, for example, I was I'm a huge Monty Python fan for four years, so I, I had to jump at that one. But. Do you prepare differently for a, a serious role as George versus... Uh, Not really. I mean, the basics of acting, it, it's all about what does my character want or need or how are they going to get it? And yeah, that's no different if you're doing a comedy or if you're doing a serious role. Um, I think one thing about comedies is that uh, it's, I forget who it was said it, but they said it's really kind of a thankless task because everybody thinks, oh, they're just goofing off. And you know, it's just as much preparation as for a serious role. How did you get into theater? Where, when did you get bit by all of this? I got bit in elementary school. I. Uh, I think the first big role I ever had, I played Linus in You're a Good Man at Charlie Brown at like sixth grade. So um, that was really what, what bit me. And then all through junior high and high school, I did a lot of theater, so. Any advice for people curious about community theater and, and what they should know going in? Do it. Um, I will say, you know, it's, it, this is a very, very good theater area. Um, the production qualities are very high. So if you're just starting out, you know, don't be discouraged if you don't get cast in the starring role right away. Let's face it, you're going to have to work your way up a bit and you know, take the smaller parts, get to know people. Uh, nine times out of ten, directors cast people that they're comfortable working with from shows they've done before. So, so don't take it personal. Don't take it personal the first 20, 30 times. <laughs> So how do these characters live with you when you spend, you know, in, in this case, you're spending an intense amount of time mm -hmm. inhabiting George? Yep. Um, George has taken over in that, uh, we were talking last night just among the cast, that we're all a lot cruder and a lot meaner to people lately. Um, I know I've been saying things that my mother would blush at now, uh, just offhand, and, and I'll, I'll probably clean that up after after the show is done. It, it's an amazing commitment that uh, community theater actors bring and give to the rest of us. What do you get out of it? <sighs> a chance to be somebody else for a while. So, and, you know, and sometimes that's a nice break. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time with us. Well, thanks for uh, the chance to be here.
something Here are the people they don't have Baby, that's just something Please welcome Colleen Myrie to the playlist. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about um, your inspiration, Who, what musicians inspire you? There's a lot. Um, I really can't just nail down one, but um, Emmy Lou Harris, I think, would be my all-time favorite singer as far as females go. But Jerry Small from Duluth mm -hmm. is one of my favorites as well. I told you one of my trick questions was, uh -oh. so what do you sing in the shower? That is a funny question. I uh, did some um, vocal training with Bill Bastian. So one of them I do is I sing opera stuff in the bathroom. <laughs> I do my vocalises. So Bill, I still do them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't know, I think I try new stuff. I really like singing jazzy, bluesy stuff in, well, in you have a few songs on your on your release, uh, "Ride of My Life." Yeah. Um, about paying your dues. Do you feel like you've done your time, <laughs> yeah. or, or and where is the next chapter of yeah, Clean Yeah, I'm still paying the dues. Um, it's been taking me a while. I'm hoping to get a third CD out. I know people have been asking about it. Um, it's taken me a little bit. I work a full time job as well. I have two children. Not, I, I shouldn't say those are excuses, but it is taking me a while. Um, but I do have songs that are recorded. I just want to finalize it. I'm writing as much as I can. There was two new songs tonight that I sang. So, yeah, I've got songs. Now we just got to get the time and the money and the time and the money. <laughs> <laughs> so. so tell me about the new songs. How, how does your process work? Do you compose at a keyboard with the guitar? Usually with the guitar. Um, a lot of time it happens where I'll just start playing the guitar and all of a sudden I'll hear this really cool chord that might strike me and so I'll just fiddle with it and then like a story will pop in my head 
through that. And I'll start visualizing the story or, you know, well, basically a story. Lyrics aren't quite, I might jab them down, um, kind of like uh, brainstorming. Then I'll ask my kind husband if he's around too to finalize it. He's really good lyricist and he knows how to put those gibberish together and make the story sound good, sound complete. And then I work and then once that is um, on paper, then I work with it from there. So where do we get more information? How do we follow you? How do we find this? If you go to my website, um, there's like a little snippet of where you can buy them, like on Amazon and mm -hmm. CD Baby and things like that. Great. Thank you so much. You're so I appreciate welcome. it. Have a great night. Yeah. You Thank too. you. Thanks a bunch. It's one of my brand new songs called Shotgun. Morning 